For those that watched the video prior to this, Kelly and I recently moved to Michigan and have gotten a fair amount of land, some of which I'm planning on building mountain unicycle trails. So here I am in the woods, putting the first parts of the trail together. But this video isn't about me raking leaves or the random things I find on the property, like this car rim. I'll plan on doing something with this in the future, but for now, we'll just keep it up here. No, this video is about the first feature I'm building. I'm hoping to build these features as we build the trail, so I don't have much planned out for the entirety of the system, but this one feature has been on my mind for a while. It's essentially a broken elevated skinny that you have to leapfrog from one platform to another. I'm adding in the option to jump off the skinny altogether instead of continuing if you're not ready or not willing to continue. What makes this a unicycle specific feature is that I'm going to be making the top portion exactly one full crank cycles length for a 27 and a half inch rim wheel. The outer diameter of my wheel is roughly 29 and a half inches, which if I measured it out or did the math comes out to just over seven and a half feet. But I'll add a foot onto that just so we have some wiggle room if you don't land exactly on the beginning of the ledge. The most advantageous crank position to jump with is a horizontal crank position which is also the position you land on. You jump and land from the same crank position. So if you're landing on the skinny with a horizontal crank and you want to jump off the skinny with a horizontal crank, I can hopefully ensure that you're set up for that by making the riding portions of the skinny about eight to eight and a half feet long. I hope this works out. I wanted to utilize whatever I already had on the property and I ended up finding these six beams that were the same type of wood used for the retaining wall in the backyard and they're just sitting here. So I got six of these beams and guess what? They're all eight feet, six inches. That's the exact measurement I need to ensure I have a full crank cycles length of beam on the top part of this feature. I dug some post holes and cut some of these beams up for my posts. The only bad part was carrying them through the woods for where I'll use them on the trail. Not super far, but I'm definitely not looking forward to carrying the three full beams out for the riding surfaces. Whew, super heavy. Could be a big drop. I dry filled the post holes with cement since I didn't have a wheelbarrow yet to mix with water. And I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but here we are. So I just learned from reading this bag because I didn't read it beforehand. I should be wearing eye protection and some sort of face mask. The dust doesn't go in my mouth like it just did. This is not a tutorial. It's more of a cautionary tale than anything else. Let's hope it's not a cautionary tale. So then I just put in the water. Wait, wait, is that gasoline? No, this is water. I just filled this five gallon gasoline tank with water and some gasoline. Do you promise? I promise. Okay, cool. From here, I just mixed the water in the cement with a ski pole and hope for the best because the next day was the task I was really dreading. Today, I have to move the big beams. Ouch. It's on my toes, it's on my toes.
I was intending to move all three, but this one was really rotted. And although I'm anticipating all of them kind of rotting at some point, this one was too much too soon. So I ended up using just some two by fours. Also, the last drop was looking super daunting. So I piled up some dirt in the hopes of making it softer, maybe. And then from here, it was just decking the beams up. Now I just had to ride it. Because there was three different points at which you can leave the feature, I decided to do them one at a time. The first exit point was not an issue, but I wasn't ready for how scary the first two and a half foot gap was. Oh man. Oh, here it is. Oh yeah, it's a big one. After ordering a new tube, putting it on and getting it ready, I was ready for day two of landing the broken skin. Well, after that, I was ready. After popping my tube jumping off the second exit point, I decided that if I was able to do the big drop at the end, it would be reasonable that the second drop is doable too. I might just say, screw it, and see if I can get from here to here. out again. I don't even know what I did that time. I decided to call it a day, but since I spent a couple days, a couple tubes, and actually a few hours of attempts on this feature, I decided to try to widen the landing portions of the skinnies, both of the last section and the middle section, since I broke off a deck board from the middle section from the fall. Oh. This should make it easier, but it also should make it a little less daunting. I think the wide landing helped.
I'll count it. It actually worked, and the dirt mound at the end did too. The eight and a half foot length of the skinny was perfect for one full crank cycle, which was critical to be able to ride this feature well. The extra foot of wiggle room was so helpful since I rarely landed exactly at the beginning of the section and needed a buffer to account for how far from the start of the deck I landed. This might be too short. I'm like right on the edge. One of the purposes behind this trail system was that I wanted to make unicycle specific features. And this feature is probably rideable on a bike, but it'll be really tough since you need speed, precision to land both tires on the planks and be able to hop really quickly with only eight feet to land and jump again. Also, the last section might be too short. I find myself jumping when the tire was off the end a lot. I might try to make a six to 12 inch extension at some point. Lastly, I saw and felt myself really moving the beams when landing on them sometimes, so I'll probably have to adjust it at some point. Right now, here's a small overview of our property, and here's the start of the first trail. This broken skinny is right about here, and we're actually going to call it Hopscotch Pop, because you have to hop to each platform, and it really destroyed my tube. Thanks for watching. I hope you got some ideas about what not to do in your backyards, and if you're interested in following more feature build and rides, consider subscribing. I also would love to hear your ideas about what I should build next. The goal is to have the features be unicycle specific, something a unicycle can do but would be really hard on a bike. Thank you guys for watching, I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments. Hopefully next time I won't build something that takes me three weeks to find the time to build and ride. Thanks and good luck!